Rain fell as I rush into the airport and weave my way through the TSA line. A crowd forms around the piano player in the concourse, causing a bottleneck near the coffee stand. I dodge a few tourists taking pictures of their feet on the famous Portland airport carpet. I spot an open stool at the bar closest to security and take a seat on the side of the bar where they only serve drinks, no food. Tom, the evening bartender, <clears throat> pushes his glasses back up and greets me. Hey, Catherine, good to see you. Single or double shot? I glance at the time. Double, please, Tom. Sports flash on all of the TVs, but of course, none of the sports I care about. The young woman sitting next to me looks up from her drink. I think she's going to say something, but she doesn't. Tom delivers my Tito's and soda with a lemon twist. Haven't seen you as much. Not traveling for work these days? Um, no, not many trips lately, I answer. For the past year, I've been a frequent flyer at Capers Cafe and Airport Bar in the Portland Airport. Once or twice a month, I've made the journey to Portland from San Diego to take care of my sister, who has cancer. These trips last anywhere from three to 10 days, depending on her treatment schedule, surgeries, and how long I can afford to be away from my own family and job. I have made 13 trips in 10 months. I usually fly home Sunday evenings, trying to cram in every last minute with my sister while making it home in time to hug my girls at bedtime. In the Portland airport, I always make time for at least one strong and overpriced drink. Tom is always on the Sunday shift. I realize that in all the hours I've logged at the bar, Tom only knows me as my given name, Catherine, the one on my credit card. He knows I make flights to San Diego, and he knows what I drink, and that is all. The first time I sat at this bar 10 months before, I felt relieved, knowing I had been there for my sister, caring for her through that first difficult surgery. I sat quietly, sipping a beer, surrounded by the buzz of all the other anonymous travelers. At the time, I had no idea I would become a regular. As I settle in on my stool, I feel the stare of a young woman next to me. I turn and say hi. It's clear she's been crying, eyes red and watery. That's not uncommon for the airport or the bar. <laughs> I had looked that way many times myself in this last year. Hi, she answers. You're obviously here a lot. Under normal circumstances, I may have taken that comment the wrong way. Did I look like an airport bar fly? <laughs> I may have. But she heard me greet Tom, saw that my phone was open to the Alaska Airlines app, and that I had at least 20 more years of traveling experience on her. I have been here quite a bit, I told her. I'm Catherine. I'm McKenna, she answers. You look as sad as I feel, I tell McKenna. Normally, I don't talk much at the bar. I drink, I hold back tears. I think about my fears of leaving my sister again. I wonder if she'll make it through another round of chemo. I wonder, how many more trips like this can I make? I feel the guilt of not being with my husband and daughters. They need me too. I think about what I've missed at home. Helping with homework, driving the girls to school and tennis, sharing conversations around our dinner table each night. I think about how I've been living in the space between my own life and my sister's. Usually, it's business people or vacationing couples sitting in the bar. They're easy to ignore. <laughs> but McKenna's sadness stirred something in me. Are you coming or going, I ask. I'm heading home for now. I don't really know what to do. I came to see my boyfriend. He moved up here three months ago. He wants me to move here. Her voice trails off. She takes a long sip of her red wine. And you're not sure if you want to, I ask. I don't think I do, but he's here, and we've been together since high school. He really wants me to be here with him. He came for a job and wants us to settle down in Portland. What do you want? I stare into my drink. 
I don't know if I can do it, is all McKenna says, hiding behind her long brown hair. The departure announcements pause our conversation. A few older men quickly exit the bar. Tom circles back around. Another glass of wine for you, miss? He asks McKenna. She hesitates, then asks how much for the glass of wine. You want one? I'll buy, I offer. She gives a half smile. We'll take another round, please. I would have loved a free drink in the airport when I was in my early 20s. <laughs> I was happy to buy the round now. You know what, can I have an Irish coffee instead of wine, she asks. Wine and then Irish coffee? Her sadness is showing. <laughs> Tom catches me glancing at the TV. The trailblazers are playing the Houston Rockets. Man, they've been on a roll lately, right? He assumes I'm a Portland fan. Totally, I respond. I check the Alaska app. My flight is delayed. The piano player closes for the night. A crowd of people arriving head towards baggage claim. Where's your home? I ask McKenna. San Diego. Same, I nod, thinking that it hasn't felt like it lately. Flight 386, I check. Yes, she answers. It's delayed, I tell her. McKenna proceeds to tell me how hard her relationship has been. She feels like she has no control over the situation, over her life. Her boyfriend isn't listening to her when she says she doesn't want to move. She isn't ready to leave her home, her parents, her friends. She feels stuck. Damned if she does, damned if she doesn't. Tears well up in her eyes. I mean, I'm 23. I don't know what I want to do with my life. He wants me to take care of him, cook, clean, work, all to support his dreams of being a chef. <laughs> she pauses. He never asks me what my dreams are. She lets out a quiet sob, slouching a bit on her bar stool. Her words sober me up just a bit. I didn't know her, and suddenly I do. I shouldn't be giving you any advice, and this may be the Tito's talking, but this is a big deal. McKenna waits for me to continue. It sounds basic and trite, but life is hard all the time. And living with anyone is a challenge, even when you love them. Your whole adult life, you will be taking care of people, whether they're your parents, children, siblings, boyfriends, girlfriends, and it only gets harder. I think about this past year traveling to Portland. I thought I could do it all, be in two places at once, take care of everyone, heal my sister, care for my niece, parent my daughters, be a good wife, a teacher, a friend, a daughter. In 10 months, I gained 20 pounds, became sleep deprived, developed a skin condition, struggled to get out of bed each day. There were Monday mornings when waking up that I couldn't remember if I was in Portland or at home. In trying to take care of everyone, I'd failed to take care of myself. I look back at McKenna and continue on rambling a bit. You don't know what life is going to throw at you in the future, but you're young. You should be out having fun and making stupid mistakes while you can. She smiles. You sound like my mom. Ouch, I laugh. <laughs> I drain the last of my drink. That's actually a compliment, she says. My mom knows me very well and thinks I should take a break from my boyfriend, have some time on my own, not feel obligated to move my life for him. I was texting her before you sat down. I told her she was probably right. But it's hard not knowing where I should be right now. I nod. I haven't felt like I was in the right place all year. Whether I was in Portland or San Diego, I felt the guilt of not being in the other city. I was in between two worlds trying to find my way home. The airport bar was my purgatory. 
Waiting for flights, I had no obligations. The only thing I had to do was sit and drink. Tom comes around to our side of the bar. One more? I check my phone. Still some time left before boarding. I point to my empty glass and nod. McKenna shakes her head no. Thank you, she says, for the drink and advice. I'm going to head to the gate. I haven't eaten, so I shouldn't drink anymore. The bar is thinning out. Shops are closing. Not too many flights left. I know exactly how many minutes I have before my boarding group queues up. I know how much longer I have to wait until I am home again. Tom places the drink on my napkin. When's the next trip, he asks. I think this is it. I tell him how I don't actually live here in Portland. I tell him that I've been coming here to take care of my sister and that soon she's moving to San Diego to be closer to our family. I thank him for all the drinks over the past year. Oh, wow, I'm sorry to hear that, Catherine. This last one is on me, Tom says. I smile, holding back tears I didn't expect. You know you're in a sad state when the airport bartender buys you a drink. <laughs> But the loneliness you feel is offset by his kind gesture. Thank you, Tom. And you can call me Kate. I sip my cocktail thinking about this airport, this bar. I've been here too much, inhabiting the space between my worlds, letting go of my guilt of being unable to exist in two places at once. I am ready to leave this ritual behind. I want to walk into my home hug my husband, kiss my sleeping girls, look at the notes and drawings they've made for me in my absence. Waving to Tom, I pick up my bag and leave the bar one last time. My flight is announced. Boarding has started. I make a quick stop at the newsstand. When I get to the gate, I spy McKenna gathering her bags, ready to line up. I wonder what decision she will make. I hope she will put herself first, have control of her own life. Hey, I thought you might need these. I hand her some snacks. And then I say the words I myself need to hear. Take care of yourself. Kate McGovern, everyone.